So, get your patient to um, sit with their arm up like they're going to arm wrestle you. So I'm going to start with a full view of elbow cast. So if you just poke a little hole in the webbook, two thirds of the way down, put it over the thumb and that um, anchors that so that you've got something to pull against. Now you can pull the webbook on fairly firmly. You can cut or tear your bits that you want to wrap around. Um, if you pull it on too firm, it just tears. So we want it fairly firm. What we're looking for is um, a good fit of the cast. We want it to sit fairly close to the skin. So don't put too much webble. You just need a layer of um, two layers there. So you don't want to be able to see the skin through it. And it's pretty user friendly. You can just, if you watch how, um, just to get around the, the contours, you can just tear it a little bit and pull it and it will just tuck a bit neat around there. So we're just heading all the way down to the elbow there. And then I just want to put another little piece just in there, just because we don't want um, plaster against the skin. So now you've got to cut your parameters in and So the top one, top parameter is the palm of crease. So just cut that and you can check that you've got that in a good spot for the patient. And then the bottom one is two, about two fingers from the pubic across the there. So you can also fold that back. And that'll vary if you've got someone that's quite um, overweight, you'll need to pull that back a bit further because you want them to be able to bend their arm without the plaster cast cutting in. So you need enough coverage, but not too much. If you found that you've missed a patch, this, this is really user-friendly stuff. You can just grab a piece, tap it on, and just pull it, okay? So, always have your stuff out ready. Bucket of water. So if the water's cold, you've got a little bit more time to work on it. So, dip your plaster in, little bubble. And then if you just squeeze the top and the bottom of it, you, you leave a fair bit of water in it. If you're quite um, okay with going quickly, you can squeeze a bit more water out. So we start at the wrist, wrapping it around twice. And then just coming up through the rest of us. And you can twist or squeeze it in. And keep it nice and narrow through there. And plaster is pretty user friendly as well. You can just drape it and then you'll be able to smooth it out later. Can you all see? I can't really see around this side here what I'm doing, but so I'm just sort of draping it up, filling in the gaps there. So now I'm just going to go back through there again. So you're just bringing it up to where the cups are. And now I'm going to drape that down again. So it's just. And then it's just a matter of overlapping 50-50, um, just rolling it around. Don't pull it on, just roll it on. A couple around the bottom and then wind the rest off going up. So we want it to be fairly even coverage over the cast. A little smooth, but this is not your final layer, so don't work on it too much. Fold back. So we want plenty of room around the thumb. So we often get them cutting in on the thumb, like right up high. You don't need that unless it's a scaphoid break. So plenty of room around the thumb. You want to keep the fingers mobile if you can. And then just the bottom fold up. And then it's a repeat of that again. So this is your tidy, tidy up layer. And it's a bit more strength. So it's just a a repeat of what we've done round the wrist twice and then up but we want to leave a little rim of the webbel so that there's no plaster touching the skin and then it's just draping it around so I can do you can just pick
kick it off and, and drape it around like that. If it's sloppy, it doesn't matter. You can smooth that back out. So it's twice through the web space with roll number one and twice with roll number two. And then just roll them to the bottom. So don't roll the whole, the last bit off all the way at the bottom there. You keep rolling at the bottom, start the <coughs> back up again just so it's even coverage. Now you can smooth it. So if you smooth it around in one direction like this rather than up and down like that where you're going to rub the <coughs> out. So. so you can wet your hands and, and do a, a neat job. So if you're wanting to mould that, now would be the time to do that. So if it's a Collie's cast, you're going to have um, about a 15 degree dorsiflexion and 20 degrees ulnar deviation there. So now it's just a matter of cleaning that up for the patient so they're tidy to go home. Um, always put a sling on the patient to go home. Um, they can sit for a while while that sets off a bit. Things to look out for, um, if they've got rings on their fingers, remove those. Um, tell the patient things like if they get tingling, numbness, um, swelling, anything like that, they need to elevate that ring. Um, if they don't get any, any relief, uh, from that, if it's like really aching, then they need to come back in and you'll have to split the cast.